there's not a whole lot of point to this video other than a lot of people kept asking for it. This is a quick look at some of the benchmark performance for an Intel processor, one, before and after the Windows patch, the security patch. Now here's why there's not a lot of point to the video. The number one reason is that we're still waiting on Intel for microcode or firmware updates, which will likely be pushed out with motherboard vendors, support websites, and on Intel's own download center. This means that there could be changes from these numbers we're seeing today. Everything could be different. The reason we're testing it today, uh, this is just an A-B test of before the latest Microsoft Windows patch for the security issue meltdown and potentially Spectre, although that needs more work, and uh, establish a baseline before and after. Has it done anything before the firmware from Intel? And then once that firmware comes out, we can look at it again with a fuller picture and likely see the, the results that would be more or less expected. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA and the X299 Dark motherboard for the Intel high-end desktop CPUs. The X299 Dark is one of the only motherboards on the market with proper VRM cooling. We've tested this and found a significant performance increase over those without active cooling on the VRMs. This board was used in our recent attempt to set a top 10 record in Firestrike, and you can learn more about the X299 Dark at the link in the description below. So it's still worth doing this test. Fortunately, almost all of our CPU testing is automated, which means that it's a couple button clicks and recording some data. So we were able to run through the bench suite that we normally use and just validate. Note that these numbers are not comparable with previous CPU benchmark numbers we've published because we're doing a few things differently, different RAM, uh, different OS, different drivers, all that stuff. This was a very quick, complete, clean install, brand new Windows install. Uh, and then we tested with the version from December and the version from the other day. And it's just an A-B test. We're only doing the 7700K right now. We've got CES in a couple days, we're leaving. So this is what we can do for now. Uh, so let's just go through these quickly, I guess. You can expect the results pretty much at this point will be largely all the same because consumer workloads shouldn't really be affected too much by this latency change. And then the, uh, the firmware will, if any changes to be expected, will be responsible for most of that. As far as why this is all happening, check out our video on Meltdown and Spectre. That'll get you up to speed on why we're here today. And uh, just quickly to note, the reason any performance degradation would be expected at all is because theoretically, uh, because the meltdown fix requires introducing steps to check for uh, vulnerabilities, you're increasing your latency to move stuff around, work with memory. So theoretically, you have a higher latency, you might have lower performance as a result. Some numbers reported online were 5 to 30% performance deficit. But note again that those numbers reported by GR Security were for primarily one Linux benchmark. And uh, every number thus far reported for most stuff in the consumer space has been, it's all the same. We haven't seen much for production. So we'll start with that and then go from there. So for the 7700K on the Gaming 7 motherboard, we first tested Cinebench with our automated suite. We observed a score of 198 for single threaded performance across all tests with differences inside of margin of error. We also observed roughly equivalent performance for the multi-threaded test, also inside margin of error for this particular application. POV Ray placed us at 123 seconds elapsed on all multi-threaded render tests, or about 554 seconds elapsed for the single-threaded test. This is basically a rendering benchmark. So once again, there's no change here. This had us at about 2128 to 2131 pixels per second multi-threaded, and 472 to 473 pixels per second single threaded. Once again, no appreciable change and one which is within margin of error. Firestrike has a lot of variants, but we run it a couple times. Firestrike had our FPS scores as on this chart. Again, no change, not even close to a change. And Time Spy showed the same, no change between 16299.192 Windows version and 16299.125 Windows version. Blender 2.78a had us at 42 minutes render time with the GN monkey head test, which is equal between both Windows version tests. We also observed 37 minutes for Blender 2.79 and the monkey heads, or about 47 minutes 
for the GN logo render and 2.79. Once again, no change even on this somewhat large time scale. As for a few games, we saw no appreciable difference in Ashes of the Singularity, where we measured differences within a margin of error. Don't go running to Reddit with this one FPS difference though, claiming that one is faster than the other. They are well within test variants. They are functionally the same. Watch Dogs 2 also proved equal. The differences were functionally zero, literally zero in the case of average FPS, and nearly zero in the case of 1% and 0.1% lows. Finally, Civilization 6 time to complete turns is also about the same at 17.76 to 17.8 seconds per turn. This is within variance, and our difference is four hundredths of a second at this point. So we're back to the intro of the video. What does this mean? The answer is nothing. All it means is that if you updated your Windows version for the tests we've done on the CPU we tested, you can expect no change. That does not mean that there is no change to performance following the patches, and it does not mean that we can extrapolate anything following the January, I believe it's 9th, updates, as that's when the major embargo lifts, and not an embargo that we're included in, by the way. This is an embargo for hardware and software companies, so we actually, for once, have no idea what is contained within that embargo. We'll find out when you do. So, yeah, again, all we're seeing here is that the current Windows version doesn't have appreciable nor measurable differences between the most recent December version of Windows and, although they weren't included in these charts, comparing a couple of quick ad hoc tests versus our tests from before Fall Creators Update, again, basically no difference. So the Windows Update alone does not appear to have changed performance in these tests and games. It's possible there are changes to performance in other tests and games. Uh, however, I would suppose that a lot of those are more likely the result of other changes to Windows outside of the security patch that Microsoft put out. Remember, this is not a patch that contains only a fix for the Intel and AMD and whatever, the Meltdown Inspector bug. And he's not really included in Meltdown, but you get the idea. Uh, it contained a lot of other stuff too, just like all Microsoft patches do. So we won't know more till January 9th for now. Looks fine, uh, but there is plenty of room for that to change when the new firmware comes out or the microcode and whatever else may be done at that point. So we'll see. Performance could always get worse. It could also remain completely stagnant, uh, but there's no room to really speculate on that for now. So we'll keep you posted. We're going to be at CES when the embargo lifts for the hardware and software vendors on what they're doing. So we won't be able to test it immediately. Uh, we will be able to talk with them at CES if the topic is still of interest and if we think they can actually provide an answer to any of the questions. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe for it, as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly and join our Discord community. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.